Good morning, I'm Dee Druden. I'm working with the Chamber of Commerce and we're interviewing our candidates for the school board this morning. And this morning I have with me Lisa Durgan and thank you Lisa for coming in and thank visiting you for with having us this me. morning. Appreciate we it. appreciate you getting up early and, and getting down here. So but we are asking all the candidates the same question and uh, take the opportunity to answer those as best Good. you can. Thank you. So the first question I have is, are you advocating for one or two high schools and please discuss your views on that. This is definitely a hot topic right now, and I certainly am advocating for two high schools, and I'd like to give a little explanation why. Uh, we started this process in 2011, and we simply started the, pro it's a long process to go through the state and get the funding in place and get the building um, all complete. And that all being said, there are some really solid reasons for wanting uh, two smaller comprehensive high schools. <clears throat> right now, if we just push the numbers forward for 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grades enrollment, the current numbers today, um, even after all the reductions, we'll, we have over 2,200 students that will be uh, grades 9 through 12 next year. That is the largest high school in the state of Wyoming by probably 500 students. And if you look at research and look at the success rate of larger schools like that, the, the success rate is very low. And the uh, success of students and academic achievement increase as you uh, lower your enrollment in a school. And there's also other things involved, uh, transitions. If we transition from junior high to a 9-10 school to a 11-12 school, transitions also uh, decrease academic achievement. So, the, by and large, the reasons for having two smaller comprehensive high school is pure and simple. It's better academic achievement for students. Um, things that help that are uh, when you have a smaller school, your uh, daily attendance goes up, your teacher satisfaction goes up, your teacher to student relationships increase, which is an important part of why the whole thing works. It's, it's a bit of a circle and a snowball of how uh, the benefits increase the other benefits and everything eventually increases academic achievement. Um, another thing that contributes to uh, increased academic achievement in a smaller high school is the amount of student participation in activities and athletics goes up. Right now, uh, for the, the past four years history of our uh, participation for ac athletics and acad or, uh, activities, has been 35%. The state keeps these records. This is on file, public information. So for the years 2012, 2013, and 2014 school years, our participation rate, 9 through 12, was 35 and 36% all three of those years. We announced we were opening a second high school in the spring of 2015, and all of a sudden that rate jumped to 50%. Students are seeing opportunities open. They know that there's going to be more opportunities for them to not only participate in, in athletics, that's half of it, but there's also more opportunities in all of the other activities. So here's a good example. If we have all those students in, in the 912 building and your English teacher of your son says, you know, you gave a really good speech today. Have you thought about being in speech and debate? And that student says, no, I never thought about that. Well, you just reeled in a ninth grader. And in our current system and any other system, you're not going to have that connectivity. So the whole thing just combines to be a, a huge improvement for what we're doing and to improve academic achievement, which also improves graduation rates. Two things were measured on uh, very clearly by both the public and the state, and those will increase when we go to two high schools. Now, a, a big uh, argument for it right now is the cost of two high schools, and the numbers are very clear. We've been very public and transparent about it to say that uh, the cost of uh, two comprehensive high schools is $1.4 million. Some say 1.8, well, $400,000 of that is just moving the ninth grade up, and that has to happen no matter what. We're overcrowded at our junior highs, and that building at South is being expanded because of that. So 1.4 million is really what our cost is to expand our activities and athletics program and provide the services we need to go to two high schools. $1.4 million for an increase in graduation rates, an increase in academic achievement, and uh, better attendance rates, all the above, 
is a bargain in my book. And yes, we can afford it. We've already cut $3.4 million out of our budget. Uh, that's to account for some of the legislative cuts we've experienced and to pay for the new high school. So to okay. say the very least, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strong proponent of the two high schools. So just one follow-up question on that. You sure. explained the $1.4 million is primarily mm -hmm. activities driven. Mm -hmm. If you have to cut something to make sure that the two high schools can function, where would the $1.4 million come from? Would that not have to come from academics? We don't really have to cut another any more money to come up with that money. We've already done it, but if we would, there's room to tighten our belts in other ways. We're not standing on, a veg on an edge of a cliff to uh, say, you know, you know, the next thing we have to cut is you know, 50 teachers. We have a lot of wiggle room in our budget for uh, both building budgets, uh, department budgets, We've already tightened those about between five and 10% and there's some more wiggle room in there. We can save some money there. And actually just the downturn in the economy where we had 450 students leaving, we are going to have to reduce the amount of teachers and staff we have just because with 450 less students, you're gonna have to reduce the number of sections you have. We've reduced, um, I don't know the exact number amount of sections in the elementary level. Um, and with teachers retiring, teachers leaving the district for one reason or another, we're eliminating some of those sections, so we're decreasing our, our costs there. Um, we still did hire 66 teachers this past year, which seems impossible when you have a downturn, but we have teachers retiring and coming and going all the time. And every spring, whether we're increasing or decreasing, we always evaluate what do our sections look like in every school, uh, do we have enough students? Do we have too many students in any given section? And we're always combining and doing the best. So okay. there's no there's no cliff here, and there's no uh, the next thing is cutting the arts program. That's not going to happen. Okay. And I think that's the biggest concern of people that when I hear them talk about it is, well, we got to cut academics in order to support athletics, and and I think that's the last thing people right. want to do. It, that's not going to happen. If anything's going to happen, we're going to reduce a, a section or two because we have reduced students. Okay. In, in reality, and I live right across the street from the um, South Campus High mm -hmm. School, and I see the progress that I make every day on mm -hmm. this building and now the, the new football field and the sure. mountain of dirt that they have over there. Mm -hmm. In reality, is this train already headed down the track, and it could, could it even be stopped at this point? Well, I've been asked that question a lot, and the nearest thing I can say is our school district is governed by a seven-person board, and if we told you know, students that we're having uh, a dress code and they all wear uniforms, that's, which, that's what we have to enforce. So technically, they, we could vote back one high school, but this has been in prog It's not like ordering pizza. We can't just call up 10 minutes later and order pepperoni instead of cheese. We've aligned our curriculum, we've aligned our schedules, we've done all the work that is involved with going to two high schools. It is an extensive process. We've been working for two years to actually do the nuts and bolts of it. We're in the process of uh, creating the means in which the students can create schedules for next year, which will drive what uh, electives we have. All of that is already in process and almost completed. Could we go back to one? Sure. But it's not the best thing for staff, it's not the best thing for students, and it, it's gonna cause far more chaos than it'll ever solve. Okay, well that's a good segue into the next que question is, do you feel schools can deliver better education to students in a seven period day versus the block system? You know, there's a lot of, of conjecture and research done on scheduling, and there's no conclusive uh, study saying that this schedule is better than that schedule. We've done the block scheduling for over 20 years and we haven't seen an increase in our um, ACT scores or any cumulative store, uh, score at the secondary level, very little if any. Um, we spend less time in the core than we ever have. Uh, the transitions, students are spending so much time in each class, there, there's a lot of, of slack time. We just decided that the pros of going to a seven period day of more, one, more time with teachers, more continuous time, seeing the teacher every day for that relationship building, more continuous time with each, all the material, 
seeing math every day, seeing your photography every day, being able to do photography every day, seeing science every day was better for learning and better utilization of our time. Those are the reasons we decided two and a half years ago to go to seven period day. The reasons we didn't put it in two and a half years ago was because right now in our current system, ninth graders actually have the ability to go to the high school and uh, take some elective courses because they're technically in mm -hmm. high school. So we have kids from Twin Spurs, Sage Valley, South Campus, and North Campus all switching buildings right now to go to these different electives. And until my son was a sophomore, I didn't realize that we waste 20 minutes of, of uh, academic time every time we transfer. So when he's sitting in class at South waiting for people to come from North Campus to start class, there's 20 minutes of lag time. They called it a study, a study hall there's no point to a, a block schedule if we're wasting all this time. 300 kids or more each day transfer building to building to go to classes. It's just a, a system that needs to be uh, changed. It needs a, it's a system that we need to just look at. Now having said that, am I opposed to doing a, a modified seven uh, period day? Absolutely not. Our principals were asked, you know, do we want to look at a modified day? What's the best uh, seven period day? They said, let's just get the seven period day in instituted. <clears throat> and next year, what we'll do is we will form committees within our buildings. So Sage Valley, Twin Spruce, uh, Thunder Basin, and uh, Camel County High School will all have committees with all areas represented to say, how is this working? How is this affecting us? Could we do it different? It's really, we have a unique community and to say, well, we want, you know, Jackson Hole schedule where we have, you know, this modified seven period day. Their community is very different and maybe there's something we can come up with that fits our community. And when that committee comes back together and at the end of next year comes in and says, this is what we recommend for modifications, I'll be all for it because it'll be uh, thought through by all the teachers, staff, administrators. It'll be a good change then and everybody will be bought in. So what I'm hearing you say there is there is flexibility for the teachers and the principals to make those decisions rather than the school board make all those decisions. Absolutely. We, we actually did go to the teachers and staff um, two and a half years ago. I know it seems like a long time, but the principals surveyed the staff. They talked to them about it. The majority wanted it at that time. Um, I can't say you know how many do and don't want it. We didn't do that type of a survey, but getting into the seven period day next year is going to be really important just to dive into it, see what our pros, see what our cons are, evaluate whether we need to modify the system. And if we do, and that's what they recommend, that's what we'll do. Absolutely okay. can we change that. That, that, is, that is workable. Good, thank you. Um, as financial constraints hit the state of Wyoming, do you feel full funding for K-12 through education should remain intact? And if so, what other state services or budgets should be reduced? Well, that's a trick question a little bit. That's a little bit of a loaded yeah, question. We're going to see what office you're running for. Here. <laughs> right, right. Well, first of all, I don't know the state's budget as well as I know the school district's budget. But holistically speaking, um, a Part of our state constitution, which very few things are a part of, says that education is an indelible right. You cannot, not much comes before education in our state constitution. Now having said that, should everything suffer? I don't think so. Um, but not knowing the budget, I can't say what should be cut, what can be cut, um, what's available. That, that's just a question for a state legislator, and I would support, we, we work with our state legislators very closely, and I think we do a pretty good job of coming up with compromise. Fair enough. How would you differentiate yourself from the opposing candidates? Well, I think experience is really a, a big thing with so many huge things going on right now, and being in a little bit of financial crisis, um, knowing where we've cut um, so far, and knowing the programs and knowing what's going on in the district is really valuable and knowing where we're going is, uh, is absolutely critical and having that stability we will have two new members regardless of, of uh, at, at best and then possibly four new uh, school board members that that leaves uh, 
two board members currently that have two years or less experience and one board member who has six years experience. So I think the, the continuity and the stability of having a few board members who have uh, longer experience is really critical. I welcome new board members. I think it's going to be great. Everybody brings new things to the table and that's really what a board is all about. Okay. Well, Lisa, thank you for your service on the school board thus far. Uh, we do appreciate it. We understand the complexities of it. Uh, and trust me, I understand the new high school as well as anybody driving by it every day and the schedules that uh, you talk about and the traffic and the construction. So yeah. uh, I know that's a huge project and we do appreciate your thank time you. and service. And thank good you. luck with your candidacy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for having me.